Hey guys, Hello how are there. you? Welcome, thanks for your patience. Sorry, I just had to restart the computer. Didn't want any trouble when we get on with you guys, so, and I find it getting a little glitchy, so. Very appropriate for Tuesday Tech Talk. Yeah, yeah, I never thought of it that way, but good point, so. Gotta make sure our tech is working. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which as you can see, we all have our fumbles, so I apologize once again for the delay, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you very much. I can see it already. The chat is full of amazing supporters and creators. Uh, we can say hi and welcome to everybody there. Uh, Biker Bushcraft, Jada Diva, uh, Gregory Salvatore. Um, uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, I can see that there's more than just those people there. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> hiding. That's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yes, definitely. Uh, Please say hi. Guys. Uh, as I was saying uh, uh, at the beginning of your welcoming message, if you have a question, please drop it in a chat. Anything about tech? Yeah. Uh, today is our Tuesday uh, tech talk. Anything about photo and video editing? Anything that you would want to know about uh, YouTube channel that you would like to create for it? Uh, maybe a graphic or a banner. Yep. I've already seen the questions about that as well. We'll get back to it. So anything um, at all? Yep. Uh, we're going to try to answer. Uh, Maybe together. Yep, we each have <laughs> um, our strengths, so we kind of work together as a team. Yeah, and uh, uh, we're going to pass along the question to the chat as well, so we can all contribute to the answer. I see TriStar Travelers. Welcome. This uh, We just connected today, if I'm not mistaken, so it's really great to have you here. Also, Tyler's here, fellow Canadian that's doing vlogs, young guy with a really good channel. So nice to have you here. Uh, it's really been great uh, connecting with uh, Canadian creators. It's yeah. amazing. And, uh, and don't get me wrong, I like yeah. all the creators. Uh, definitely. <laughs> we can never stress that But I'm a little bit biased for those <laughs> who come uh, from Baltics, <laughs> because I'm from there, and a little bit biased for those who come from Canada, because we are from here. So <laughs> just a tiny, tiny bit. But I love you all. Yes. I had a message from a Joe. Miss you, Andrew. We'll have to catch up. I am so honored that I got a call from the Mr. A. Joe, so that was such a pleasure. Unfortunately, I was with uh, other things at the moment, but my and wife... And I got yeah. to talk to Joey. Yeah, which she is blaming talk. about. And <laughs> yes, Canada rocks and A. Joe rocks and all of you guys rock. It's such a pleasure to have you all here. It's amazing to connect with you guys uh, besides the YouTube channel oh. and chats as well. It's so great that we get to be personal. And that's what it's all about. That's what I've been telling in our previous slides as well. It's not about channels only. It's about people behind it because that's who creates these amazing videos and channels. It's the people behind the channel. So we would like to know more about you guys and connect as humans, not yep. as channels. <laughs> That's right. And that is the big part of all this. It's nice that we had things bring us together. And we just want to also now kind of expand on that, and now start to know each mm -hmm. other better, who's working. Because even like you're getting to know us now, as we've always been pretty much behind the camera, I think as you've gotten to know us more, I think it's helped you maybe understand, appreciate uh, our work that we do. And it's the same thing we want to do with you guys. This is the fun part of all of it. Everybody here has a story. Everybody has an interest that brought them to YouTube. Some was film, and a lot of it wasn't film. So you had to learn a lot of things, and that, and that's amazing. It just shows what kind of talent you really have, because it's not somebody filming for you and editing for you and stuff. That's night, <laughs> sleepless hours looking everything up on YouTube on how to add video, uh, add audio, how to edit a video, uh, how to tell a story, and that's what's really neat about it. I find the most impressive. Uh, biker bushcraft is a great example of that. There's somebody who, you know, biking all over, uh, sharing his stories, his wisdom. I mean, he knew how to do that already. That's in him. That's his passion. That's his interest. But then to have to do all the video and that, and I don't know biker's uh, history. And he says he could not reach us on Twitter. Please try to message me when you get a chance. Definitely. Because we'd love to have you on. And there's a man who maybe or maybe didn't have the video skills that he had before or presenting himself in front of a camera, but does an amazing job now. So I find those stories really great. That's what I love hearing from you guys. Uh, and uh, hi, Bottle Caps. And uh, yes, yes, unfortunately, we uh, have heard the news about the yeah. headquarters today. Uh, I don't want to quote any particular sources as uh, the reports about it uh, are a little bit different from different uh, places, but nevertheless, uh, it's it's sad that we uh, anybody has to deal with this. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter on YouTube or at this 
schools or anywhere else, uh, no matter what your stance is on guns, uh, uh, it, it's still upsetting that somebody has to suffer. Yes. Um, so yes, thank you for the question. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, because this is a bad thing to follow up after, because I couldn't read it while we were, like, Zenny was talking, and George Salvador, uh, Salvador, what type, of, what connect online and have a relationship? What is the sorcery you speak of? <laughs> I agree. I agree. And especially the last couple of months, the way everybody's been running on YouTube, and almost feels like we have no life to even connect with the humans in front of us. I think that's why this is really important. Uh, I think that's why this works well. I believe that's what we're craving now out of this. I like to think that we're showing that it's not just a fly by night. These people are here. You guys are here. It's kind of given me the comments to believe that this will continue on, that we won't uh, stop supporting each other, won't stop creating. And that's comforting because it's so nice now that we have people watching what we do and appreciating it. You guys, and I don't want to lose that. And I hope we make you guys feel the same way as well. That's what, to me, is the greatest part of this community when it's all said and done, is being there for each other for the long haul. Because I see a lot of passion in people that are here, and I uh, want to see that grow with you guys. I definitely want to see what you are doing in six months, a year, two years from now. We have so many new people here. My God, Grumpy, Man review, Grumpy Man's Reviews. I love that handle, by the way. Boo -boo -boo. I, Hi. Yes, I was just watching one of your videos a while ago. You want to see a crazy car? This guy definitely got one at the auto show. This thing is is something to behold. So definitely check that out. Maybe you can uh, tell people where you're going this Saturday. That will be something okay. exciting uh, to talk about after Saturday. Yep. Yeah. Well, we went to get some parts for my car that I needed. I needed a new. I have a 2005 Mazda Tribute that I bought brand new and reluctantly still don't want to give up. Probably once in a while to my wife's chagrin. <laughs> but, so, but we had to go to this parts, and it's a, a chain here in uh, Montreal, well, not just Montreal, parts of Canada called Kenny Upol, and it's one of those you pay an entrance fee, go in, they tell you where the cards are online, you can take the parts yourself. Luckily, I have a friend who is a good mechanic, and they were, there's a new location opened up, and they had the radio station, their French radio station from Montreal, and they were asking to spin the wheel, and you can win a prize, and I always say, ah. Not interested, but my friend said, sure. So he spun the wheel and, wheel and ended up winning two tickets to the Monster Truck uh, event that's coming this weekend. And he asked me to go, and I was like, oh, maybe. And then I said to take his friend, because I felt kind of guilty of me going and not taking my kids. So I got a call two days later from the radio station and ended up, I was the proud winner of four, check out, four. Four VIP tickets. So I get to take all three of my kids and me, and we get to go in early. We get to go to the pit. Oh, sorry, that's not coming out so much because of the light. I apologize. But we will have pit access. So I'm taking my seven year old daughter, my 11 year old son, and 20 year old son. So I thought that was pretty nice because I usually don't win things. So I was very, very happy about that. I think you guys are going to have a blast. It's, it's so amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think for any age, uh, and as you hear, we have them all covered. Yeah. Uh, I think for all three of them, it's going to be a amazing experience. And it's going to be something to talk about with you guys yes. uh, up on our, uh, I don't know, Sunday, mm -hmm. Monday, we'll see uh, live stream. Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be taking some video? I can't wow. take any video. I'll try to get a little bit with my phone, but there is heavy restrictions on backpack and cameras. And because we're allowed into the pit, it's going to be extra tight. So it's looking more like my phone, which only shoots a 1080, because I don't upgrade my phone much. <laughs> so, But I will try to make it work as well and at least have some photos and stuff, which, of course, I'll get Xenia to touch up before they go on. That's my secret of how I get decent photos when they go online. So. <laughs> the tip of having yeah. photos is having a wife photographer. <laughs> That's right. And the funny part is I'm the one who actually studied all this years ago, but then she got the bug for it. I mean, she just has natural talent, but she also spent tons and tons and tons of time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> tons of time on YouTube researching every possible technique there was to, to do. It is that extra effort. That's where a lot of those things. And same with me with video. I mean, I sometimes on a spend feels more time on other people's work 
learning how to do things when I'm making one than on my own. Uh, yeah, actually, a lot of uh, uh, learning for my photos has been. Uh, <laughs> did you did you see what bottle cap wrote? Bottle cap is not behaving again. <laughs> I never win anything, but I won my divorce. So, <laughs> well, you are my hero, my friend. If it's a good thing, then <laughs> yeah. congratulations. Then, <laughs> uh, for uh, you know, for each their own uh, lottery ticket, I would say. She's um, trying to put me back on track now. After that. Yeah. Somebody has to be a serious one, right? Yeah. Uh, That's true. <laughs> surprisingly, it's going to be me. <laughs> um, yeah. So go back to the the, the tips uh, and tricks of photo photo wipe. Yeah. Photo wipe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew's right. He actually uh, studied um, the graphic design and, and media, and uh, got me into it by showing me how to work with Photoshop. Just for fun, like who's working on things, and I just was curious. Um, and yeah, and I think that's how it started more of me working and editing things and trying things out, and more uh, getting tips from you and learning on my own, and, and then getting um, workshops done online and Creative Live. I always refer to because I was watching like hours and hours on end at the beginning of my journey through this. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think a lot of things. Um, a lot of things. There was well. talent. There was drive. There was interest. Uh, many of you not know this, but Xenia is actually a trained psychologist, which I've always felt that's helped her with photography. She has a great eye. She's very good at putting people at ease to get the right photo. And you'll watch her a lot of times at events. She'll walk over her shoulder with her camera and clicking people when they're talking from across the room or she'll like have it against her chest and she'll be checking her viewfinder when they don't realize or she'll talk to them for 30 minutes and she's actually taken 150 pictures and nobody even realizes that the photography session started yet and that's a big part is keeping people as comfortable as possible you want all your subjects to feel like the camera's not there that's when you really oh you have a question yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep uh, call, uh, saving the questions and, and uh, when we, once we go to the tech part of this, uh, uh, we're going to answer Yep, them. no, definitely, and a great question. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't like the post photography as much. I, I like, as you said, uh, catching the moment more, and, and especially when people don't know that they're yeah. uh, taking pictures of them. Uh, or if it's a post one, I like to... Uh, I'm saying impose the confidence. Uh, so if somebody is not uh, really confident and they're shy, I like them to come out of the photo shoot feeling much better about themselves and, and have much more confident uh, about them. Uh, that's my way of thinking. Um, Sorry, Grumpy Man's Reviews is, has to take off. He's in the UK and understandably it's time for his bed. I believe it's five hours time difference from here. Yes, thank you so, for coming though. We really appreciate it. Yes, uh, it's so happy and I hope you can make it back again soon. And uh, please drop us a line. Uh, I'd like to keep in contact with you, so maybe we can have you on the show sometime. We're definitely looking for as many people as possible. Uh, yeah, uh, as uh, you have seen on our Twitter, if you are on there, and if not, I'll just uh, repeat, if you want to be a guest on our show, or if yeah. you would like uh, your video to be highlighted, uh, please tweet us or message us on any of the main social media or on our email, which you will be able to see uh, later on when the video is posted or below in the description on our previous uh, live video, please message us. And uh, it's more of a highlight and talk, as we said, about you, about the channel, mostly about you, um, uh, an interview. Example yep. of that, again, you can see in our yesterday's amazing interview yes. uh, with Very Down great. the Rabbit Hole. She's so uh, amazing. She was an amazing guest. If you haven't seen it, go over yep. after this live stream and watch it. It's great. All the tips about travel, about life, about managing things with uh, social media and creating the blog and kids at the same time. Definitely. Uh, we definitely enjoyed it. So uh, after this live stream ends and all these end, <laughs> uh, go over and definitely check it out. And if you do, leave a comment and like yep. so we know what you did. For sure. For sure. It was, a, it was an amazing time and our patience was second to none with us. Uh, she really helped us uh, wet our feet into the idea of doing interviews. I mean, we, of course, we're going to tr want to get better as time goes on. And, uh, with you guys, that's a, uh, we hope we're doing that. You guys are an awesome audience. It's such a pleasure. It's so nice to see so many of the people coming back. Yeah. Uh, when we first started this, we thought, well, we didn't even think. We kind of fell into it and then wondered if there was something to it. We said we'd come back, but we said we were Never back for more. For it. <laughs> yeah. And that was going to be kind of a one-time thing. 
I think yeah. that the psychology part, as uh, Bottle Cap said, uh, Jordan Peterson. Uh, no, I I can't even uh, I can't even compare myself to uh, to that man. <laughs> but from the psychology part, that's why I keep talking about getting close and not personal with you guys. Uh, because it's exactly what we are interested about. Yeah. It's you, you. It's so it's all letters. people's everything. Whether you shoot it with video, photography, interviews, vlogging, it all comes back to people. <laughs> it, it, one uh, one of the best comments I ever got, and it still sticks to me. And now at the moment, of course, it's going to rush me who said it. Was that you have an, a, a, a talent of taking some ordinary thing, and making it interesting. And that will always go down in history as probably my favorite comment, because that's exactly what I've always wanted to do. Even a train has a personality where it is the day where it's running. Uh, a tree out in the middle of a field, of course, it's got a way more emotional draw to it than a forest. There's, there's emotion in everything, and that's what you always want to try and tap into with your video or photography, is giving a voice to whatever your subject is at that time. The sky. Uh, look at the sky. Try that one day. Uh, set four times a day in that day at different intervals to look up at that sky, and you're going to see a completely different feeling, a completely different story. And that might sound weird, but the clouds do tell a completely different tale versus a deep blue sky or a hazy summer sky that's actually not so nice and pleasing to look at, but it's still telling a story. Same as people. We have our ups and downs. Always, always, always tap into the motion of the subject that you have in front of you. And that's what really makes people connect with what you're doing, is that raw emotion. And be aware of your surroundings. Never be shy to not, like Xenia said before, and it's so true, try to avoid being here with your camera. Always be at your chest level. Put it down by your feet. Lay down on something. Anything that takes away the usual perspective of how people would see that if they were there. Because if you have 100 people standing in a row taking a picture of that tree in the field I mentioned, I guarantee you 95 to 97% of them are going to be here with their camera. You don't want to be there standing up and looking directly at it. All the mood is set in angles. Angles are so impactful. Steeper the angle, the more you build the audience towards the subject. Less of an angle, it's a little more subtle, but it lets them connect more in a deeper way. Uh, yeah, I, I I wanted to add about uh, trying to see the details and uh, and see the things within yeah. something that maybe somebody doesn't, and you do. Um, I, I love to, to get inspiration from amazing photographers all around the world. And one of the uh, bigger ones that I've been following for years now is Jasmine Starr. Uh, and uh, she's an amazing photographer, uh, wedding photographer, entrepreneur, and, and just uh, amazing woman. But when, when I started following her and what really uh, I kept in mind uh, from her, um, when somebody asked her, how did you uh, develop your photography skill? Um, what she said was uh, she had an orange tree uh, in the backyard. And uh, every day or every day of the year, she went out it took a picture of the same orange tree. Well, you would say, why would you do that? It's the same orange tree. But every day it was a different light, a little bit different weather. Mm. Maybe there was a bird there, maybe there wasn't. But it was always the same subject of, of the same orange tree every day for a year. And it made her appreciate the details in the orange tree, it made her see things differently. Because, you know, the first week or two, maybe, well, you know, you have 15 different angles you can do. But what after? After you start to pay the attention to details that maybe you didn't see before. Yes. Uh, and true. I always try to remember that, is that you can be creative no matter where you are, no matter what are you looking at. You can always find something to take a picture or take a video of. And I oftentimes find myself training myself, so to say, if we go somewhere and um, let's say Andrew's taking a video of a train, which I sometimes go with him. Yeah. And uh, yes, I sometimes do take pictures of the train, but it's really not my passion. Uh, so what I do, I train myself to see things. I, I go down on level of the ground and I try to see the little details of the grass or, or a rock or notice some things that can actually captivate me and take pictures of those 
I'm training myself self regularly to see difference in, in, in the regular places. And I, and I find it works amazing afterwards when we go and shoot for clients, Definitely. Your, your eye is already trained. You are already seeing it differently. For sure. That's very true. And it's always, uh, I'm trying to, I wouldn't want to quote the wrong person, but it was about the idea of almost like shooting as if you were different animals and different people. Think if you were a seven-year-old child, how you would see the world. How would you see it if you were a deer walking through it, a groundhog? And the whole point of that is, is to make you think from different levels and different speeds. Um, that's sometimes when I do those swooshing shots because my camera, I can hold it in front of me with the Z-axis straight out. That's where I'm getting those like chest levels, uh, drone style shots. Um, another, uh, it's, it's, it's just... The speed, the speed in film also involves everything that photography said, but that's the added part on top of it, moving. Uh, sometimes it's great to hold the camera down and just walk with it by your waist. It, it gives a perspective of the person's joining you. Or one of my favorite shots, and I love doing that, you'll notice, especially in some of the train videos, is to take the camera, always look for long grass, and I'll hold it down in the grass and slowly rise. And the Hank and Joe wedding, I did that too by the shoreline. Yeah. Because I wanted to get the feel of somebody like looking out and seeing the like the, the bay, the mountains. Instead of just starting on and saying, oh, well, this is a beautiful mountain vista, click and let's film. Try coming up on an angle like this or panning across the front. And then when you go into your edit, that's where you'll slice off your beginning and ending because nobody's perfect on their takeoff or, or uh, ending. But that's that middle spot. That's what you use for your cuts. And that's why I like using lots of multiple cuts. That's why I'll shoot the same thing sometimes 30 times. I've done it lots. And it is frustrating and aggravating and going back and forth between which is the best shot. But sometimes I'll do that if I have a really great shot, for instance, say with a mountain and I pan. Well, I'll cut at the beginning and ending of that one. And if I have another one that kind of works good and I just was up a little bit, maybe I'll zoom, I'll show the two of them. And the next one, I'll bring it in 20% or bring it out 40% and show more of the Vista. You really want to change your, your, especially with mine, because with mine, I have no auto uh, uh, adjustable uh, lens. So I got to use, I got to rely heavily on zooming in or out in post production. But it's always great to take them at different focal points because you, you can give more of a depth to the place just by zooming in or out and showing the same, same shot twice. You can maybe make it feel intimate for the first shot and then the second shot more of your actual surroundings. Uh, yeah, lots of people here uh, as well agreeing to what uh, we're saying, what you are saying, uh, uh, you know, like looking at the sky. <laughs> so yep. so that uh, they're the only ones. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's, uh, I, I think it's a, it's a feature of creative people that we try to see uh, things uh, that are not there sometimes even. Uh, oh. Gregory Salatari says that his professional motto has been a picture tells a thousand words. That's I right. choose which ones they are. Very true. That's very right. true picture can say so much and, and it's so amazing how much it can yep. entail it's it's yeah uh, the more i work with it the more i i kind of understand the, the the depth of it that's why i like shooting video myself without any actors into it because i really love that story i want to create like the old novels that i used to read when i was younger uh the westerns that my dad had i like that visual where somebody can connect the story when somebody writes down, they get what it's what I was thinking at the time or feel how I was feeling when I was shooting that there's not a greater compliment in this world. Nothing will make a person feel better than them making a connection to what you do. I see biker bushcraft. What do you plan your shots or make art? Yeah. Out of what you find? I'm going to give that one right now. Please. Okay. <laughs> Cause that ties right into what I was saying. So that's why, and that's a great question. And it's very hard. I'd say most of it comes in post-production. I, though, like to find a soundtrack that I really like or two, how many is going to be in the video. And I'll listen to them sometimes a hundred times. I'll listen to it till I have it so embedded in my head. It, take, it literally takes me a week to get a song into my head after a video. I'll be singing it to myself everywhere I go. Because I, to me, that's my voice. That's my, uh, the, the, the dialogue for the film. Even if there's no words to the song, the track i should say it sets the tone i want that 
build up and okay I need, I know I need to get 30 seconds of something of this going on before we're going to get the bang because after that that drums kick in and everything and we got to change gears so I will cut a video even some shots that I think are incredible to suit the timeline the timeline in the end is always in control and I use Adobe Premiere and I zoom right in and I want to see every sound wave and one little trick is I, uh, for doing that as well. People like singing to the beat. It's good to go on the highest note where you see it's changing. But certain times, if you're doing sound effects, like our opener that I made for our intro for our video, where you have sound effects, for those, you really kind of want like a, the click and the ding sound. It was better to put them in the middle of that sound wave instead of where it's at its highest point because it looks more natural because it happens so fast. If you put it at the end, it will cause a delay. Oh, nobody gamers here. Musky Hans. So father and sons. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Guys, we're at 18 and we just got going. Uh, Pet Rock Media. I always love that name. So glad to have you here. And, and please uh, tweet it out. Let us uh, let yes. everybody know. If anybody has a question, please also drop it in. I, I am collecting all the questions so we can answer them. Yeah. <laughs> I um, told my dad that I was in where, you know, we've been speaking to some of the channels about coming on. I said, uh, Got some uh, uh, guys who do fishing. And, as, of course, some of you guys know my father was a guide for over 20 years for salmon fishing with uh, fly casting. And when I told him, Hans, you were one of the ones I was mentioning, and he gave me, like, 40 minutes of stuff to tell you. He was very excited to have you on. So I definitely hope we can get to here in the near future. And thank you for those who uh, tweeted already out and shared the stream. Thank you. It's much appreciated. Uh, lots yes. of new faces as well. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing how supportive <coughs> this community is and how much it's expanding beyond that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, as uh, Trace Star Traveler says, uh, hooking up with so many amazing channels and learning how to better my blog. Excellent. Yeah, we learn from each other, I think, a yep. lot. Um, watching each other's videos is not only about watching the video. I think a lot of it is uh, watching how it's done. Yep. Uh, maybe you can see different angles, different way of lighting, different way of editing. It's so much inspiration out there. It's amazing. And and uh, I'm already getting ideas for new videos from you guys. And it's not to copy you guys. I'll see certain shots or certain subjects I never even thought of doing. There's so many great ideas out there. I, I love what you guys are doing. You know, and I will mention it. Uh, we as about I am creator, and it's great that you know it's brought us all together. Um, it was a great. Now we're making it stick more, which is this is what I'm really proud of. I believe every good idea should continue to grow, and that's what we're doing here now. And it's nice to see everybody supporting each other. And instead of just, we're not just liking and stuff, we're actually appreciating each other's work. And that's where we all become better at what we do. We can have all the tips in the world, all the greatest software, uh, hardware, but this, I honestly believe, is what makes us good. So I, it's really nice to watch and nice to see. Um, well, uh, did you want to get to the questions? Uh, sure, yeah, let's yeah. take some. Definitely. Okay, well, if, if anybody still has some questions, please drop them in, in the chat, yep. uh, and I'll try to catch them <laughs> and answer them. Uh, also, stick around. We might do a little... Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, yeah. Uh, video. <laughs> <is a> video. <laughs> Thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, my, my brain, my just brain just went yeah. somewhere for a second. One for a while. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem. I couldn't follow you. I was trying to, but yeah. <laughs> so stick around. Uh, we uh, are going to do a little uh, yep. tips and tricks about creating uh, video thumbnails. Uh, so if you're interested in that, stick around. We're going to do it um, uh, after we get through the Just be one second. Sorry. Now, um, I hope you still can hear me and see me. Uh, yes, I have them all copied right here, so uh, they're not lost. <laughs> um, Oh, hey, jo Joey says that I'm creators dating site for YouTubers, and it's really <laughs> boosted his channel. Yes, it's 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 a great way of connecting. That's yeah. we agree, dating site. <laughs> I never thought of that one before. I yeah. Love that. yeah, I I, I love that comparison. That's great. Trainman, hi. Oh, that's so nice to see. I'm so glad to see the train guys here because I was trying to first to get train guys are definitely somebody like most groups here. It takes a while to get in. 
and I don't do trains all the time, and uh, some of the purists don't enjoy train videos where it has music on top of it. So it is a real honor to have you guys here, and I'm glad you guys are connecting with other people and they're getting to see your work as well. They got some fantastic videos, these guys, and they're, I'm really glad you're getting to uh, connect with them. So uh, they're they're troopers. These guys will stand out in the pouring rain, uh, two feet of snow, whatever it takes for hours just to get uh, five minutes of footage. So my hat's off to you, and I'm really glad you're here. So. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, Jada Diva asked the question about what do you use to make channel banners? Well, as I mentioned uh, in our previous yeah. live stream, I'll um, let you take that one, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. you uh, and the next one, probably too. Next one is a wedding. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, you can go as complicated or as easy as you would like to. Uh, if you want to go a bit more uh, technical way, you can, of course, use uh, uh, Photoshop, uh, right? It's uh, it's it's probably the go-to software to do any graphic design uh, in general. But if uh, you don't want to go into technicalities or you don't want to learn uh, how to do it or you don't have Photoshop, uh, I really, really suggest to go and check canva.com. It's a great place to create any kind of graphic designs for your social media, um, Twitter, banners, uh, uh, Facebook posts, uh, it's already sized uh, for each uh, post the way it uh, would perfectly fit in the stream. Uh, there, you can also have it as a phone app and phone app actually offers a little bit different version from the web version. Uh, in the phone app, you have more um, things that you can post directly online. So lots of the times, for example, if you have noticed our new uh, posts for our live feeds, those are created on Canvas, on canva.com. And uh, I created them first in the web version just because I like, I prefer to have it on a, a bigger screen, on a bigger desktop. But uh, uh, after that, I use my phone and use it uh, to adjust it um, and to customize it um, uh, through the phone app. So if, if that's your thing to do it fast and to do something that you would like to repeatedly copy and, and use it over and over, uh, especially for social media, uh, go and check canva.com. Uh, yesterday we had a question about creating a YouTube uh, uh, banner. Uh, I said I would gladly help uh, to create it. Uh, I think it was BlackRock uh, EDM, I think. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, so your memory is better than mine. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely, if you, if you would like to have uh, a help, or uh, we can help make you a banner, and uh, so just let's get in touch. <laughs> um, definitely, for sure, we like help out. And Biker Bushcraft is asking, uh, is about uh, uh, do you use Lightroom? Uh, yes, I use Lightroom. Yeah, I, sorry, you said including. Oh, sorry, cut you off. Including Lightroom, or do you use Lightroom? It was. Uh, like, yeah, if, like, if it refers to the question about uh, using channel banners, no, I wouldn't be using channel banner to uh, to. I wouldn't be using Lightroom to uh, create channel banners. Uh, Lightroom, um, I use both when I edit my pictures. Um, Lightroom, I use to uh, process my raw files and to do um, a main processing um, with histogram and uh, a white shadows, contrast profiles, all that stuff. Um, mainly the whole uh, look of the picture. And then if I need a uh, detail edited or uh, maybe cloned out uh, some discrepancies in the picture, or I need to work on a certain zoomed in part that I want to make more detail, then I uh, transfer the picture to the Photoshop and then I work on it there. So definitely when I work on my photography work, either for clients or not, I use both uh, programs Lightroom and Photoshop in conjunction. But when I'm using graphics, I'm trying to use more of the tools that we have handy that makes it more faster. Because as much as Photoshop is um, created for that, Oftentimes, it takes longer time than you would want to spend on it. So, uh, yes, you can do it on Photoshop, but again, I would just suggest try out. Yeah, and he wrote so in conjunction with Photoshop. That's my fault. I didn't read them out properly at the beginning. Yes. So, that's what he was asking. so for editing photography, I'd use both. Sorry about that, Biker Bush. That's my bad. Yes, definitely. Uh, we will definitely. <laughs> that's not what I meant. Uh, yes, I do it in conjunction. I will do uh, probably um, 
maybe next week or, or, or later on. Uh, we don't have a schedule yet, but uh, I will do a little uh, like a walkthrough, um, maybe my photo editing workflow. Uh, maybe we can do that. And then you can actually see how I do starting from importing the pictures, pulling and going through both of the programs and getting to the end results, if you're interested, of course. Uh, hope I answered the question. Uh, Trainman does all his thumbnails in Photoshop. Excellent. Yes, as I said, Photoshop is excellent, excellent way, and most of the time that's what we use. But sometimes we just need it fast, and fast sometimes is not Photoshop. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Uh, so for sure. Uh, now, um, uh, yeah, in conjunction with with, with this question, uh, we already answered. What are your primary software for stills and video? So I answered about stills, uh, yep. Photoshop and Lightroom. What do you use? Um, for stills, it's definitely Photoshop. I avoid Lightroom for the simple reason is that I uh, can get Xenia to do it. So <laughs> that's that's the short answer. But for video? For video, I'm definitely in Premiere. I'm just going to go into Photoshop because I actually have it on the screen share right now. Okay. And I'm just going to show you guys an example of um, thumbnails that I've been working on too. And this is kind of a neat little thing because I actually got the idea. We're talking about getting it from other people. I'm going to... Try, uh, here's a picture. I already had did some work to it, and it was just straight from the video. And my camera is not very good at taking out still shots. That's why it gives a very good cinematography look to it, or cinematic, excuse me. But it's not always the clearest. Yes, it was way more clear than this, but it's not like shooting at 60 frames per second where they're crystal clear that you can make portraits out of every frame. So I added, because it was foggy, I brought the train up close, and I added some... Uh, I, I dampened the colors and masked it, and then I brought the train out more by and leaving the fog, and then after went back and started enhancing the little bits of it. But there was still something, still something missing. And I actually went on Peter McKinnon's tutorial, and he's there's a great example of seeing something that I hadn't thought of in a while, and a different way of doing it was adding uh, direct blur. But then the way he did it was instead of adding it directly to the picture, he added it to a layer mask, which you can see here, this white with the black. And a layer mask is neat because you can make changes to the picture without actually disrupting the picture. So if you don't like it, you can always delete the layer mask, disable it, or you can touch it up again once you're inside. So as you can see, once I click on this, there's the motion blur. Now let's see if I open up the layer here. I'm going to switch it over to spot mode. And I don't know if it will let me do that or not. But I'm going to take my pen. Now, this I'm not so used to doing. It's That's why I was never a good guitar teacher, because I was I could play, but I was very bad at explaining what I did. But I'm going to try here. So here's our layer mask. And as you can see, the black. Well, that's I added the effect on that layer, but then I copied the layer, added the effect, but only on the layer mask. So now if I click around here, We'll take away and I'll come out of the spot. Yeah, that would be easier. So I can start bringing in the color. I just got to click on my layer mask. There we go. Now you can see it's eating away at that effect that I had put on. However, if I switch or control X, if you're on PC, as I click here, it's bringing it back into effect. So let's just try this. I'll just show you what it looked like. That's what it looked like when I first applied the effect. I took a brush. I brought down the hardness a lot. Probably about there if I remember right. And my brush was bigger. And let's see here. Now I just start clicking. Oh, I got to bring it back again. So we switch once more. And as I start clicking, it starts bringing the train out. That's kind of a hard chopped edge. I don't really like that as much, though. So I'm just going to go back. See? And it's not hurting the picture whatsoever. And the hardness was going to go way down. Way, way, way down. Let's try. Actually, let's even go with brush. Brush would probably be better for that. Yeah. Bring up the size there. This should be better. Take away some more of the hardness. Increase it just a little bit more. And now we'll start clicking. And you see with that one click, now it looks more natural. You're starting to see those brushed in lines coming in. So it gives the train a lot more present 
look without uh, without losing the fog. So you still get the feel of the movement down here on this side. You can see the lines coming up to it. I can click again if I want, and it's just eating more and more away. Maybe I want to go back a little bit more, have a bit more of the train visible. I can click here again. You can see this way. I can come up into the top corner. I can just change my brush size a little bit. How about there? That's too small. Maybe around here. And I'll just start eating away at the edges. Maybe I don't want anything up on this side. And as you can see, the black here is showing where I'm making the changes. I'm just kind of like that. And already the train now has a lot more impact. Oh, see, I have a little too much here, I find. It's not blending with the trees well, so I'll just come and click once or twice. And there we go. Now we have it. It's more foggier. still has the lines. And uh, that adds to the effect. It really gave that foggy morning look to it. So that was kind of the technique behind that one. Uh, thumbnails, I always use a lot of contrast. That's one thing I always do. I want them to really stand out. Uh, here's some more examples of them, you know, where I just played around, tried different things. Now you see here behind me, I had done this because I wanted certain areas not to show through her because she's a little bit transparent. Like, who, by the way, is my beautiful niece and my wife did a uh, photo shoot with last year. Her name was Alyssa. So uh, she was part of the inspiration for that video because there's a great example where I had a song for months but nowhere to put it. And I try different things. I save all these layers. Oh, that's from the last the beforehand. See, so I had a black and white of her. I had the color one of her. And it just mix and match. Sometimes it can be 16, 17 layers. Um, let's see if we have any other ones here. I might look at. You see, these were all shot from the, the train. Like, there's an example of what that train looked like when I uh, took the screenshot in VLC. And this is the final. So it just shows you with adding some color, bringing out the depths. I always, for thumbnails, like a lot of contrast because they're going to be small, so I really want them to stick out. So I always go very heavy here on the blacks. I like black because they're not going to see every little detail is too small. So I'd rather have a lot of contrast so it sticks out when it's next to a bunch of other thumbnails on a YouTube selection sheet. Uh, this was another one I was looking at using but didn't go with. Uh, this one here, I wish I could show you the original. <laughs> well, you just got to go and look at the video. Uh, even that, was it was a lot paler because I shoot flat. This was Xenia's handiwork, as per usual. And, I mean, she just breathed so much life into this photo. It's unbelievable. I keep one file because I like everything unison. So, as you can see here, there's the click for the 4D. 4K, excuse me. That's the bottom banner. There's our text. So I always know, and I always export that way. So I always know everything's the exact same size. Everything is located. So as you go down the list, this is basically every thumbnail I've made for my videos. Uh, right back to the beginning. So other people have their ways of doing it. That's just my way I prefer. This is one of my favorites. I find this train really stands out. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to bring it to the front, and I want the contrast of the blues, the yellows, and the silver. <clears throat> Because a silver would get lost a bit if it was back further, but because it's so close and it's shrouded by yellow, it's really got a good punch to it, and it also blends it in with the sky. So there was a lot of great shots in those video, but I always look for one that really... And another thing, see, there was another one I looked at using. That was my other consideration. I still don't know if I made the right decision, but I don't know. I find in the end this one just has a bit more of the ambience going on. But I've also been gone back. I think on some videos I've changed the thumbnail four times, five times over the span of a year. Just wanted to try something different. The train again here, you can see. And this one I was lucky because it was already a bit of motion blur and it just happened that the camera focused really well into the front of the cab. So there wasn't so much to do to this one. So some of them you lock out with and some are more work, but it is the first video people are going to see of your work. So the first uh, image. And sometimes too, if you're taking pictures that day, I mean, there's one thing about uh, doing clickbaity pictures that have nothing to do with your video. But if you took pictures out there, you got a picture that looks a lot better than what you have in your video. By all means, use it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Lots of people do it. Uh, my truck here. I like this one because of the silver in the back. I used to be a truck driver, some of you know already. And this one is it's slick. It's sexy. It has, uh, I don't know, it's just out of them all, this was the one. I like the shot from the side. 
And when I was filming, this was a great example of getting different angles. This guy was parked here. He probably thought I was insane. I circled him for 10 minutes. I would walk along the side at different speeds. I'd hold the camera down around my knees, up around my chest, up almost at my head. I would put it in a flashlight mode and walk across it. I'd come in from the side and then pan out. Always think of what your music's going to sound like working with it. You know, that shot that's going to look great with the, the tempo changes into the chorus or the the bridge, anything like that. You're, you're basically like organizing a symphony. And that's the best way in my for me, excuse me, I should say, to make my videos, is to always try to have a song in your head. And sometimes I'll do it with a song in my head that I never even heard yet. I gotta go back then and start digging for days to find the song that's gonna work right with it. <coughs> Excuse me. For these series, this one, uh, the truck, uh, which uh, no, that was the art one, the boat, uh, stuff like that. I always love those mid two thousand Discovery Channel Mean Machines uh, TV shows. So I always like those like sixty seconds where they just go crazy with the camera, with the music, and really showcase everything around. So that's always been my inspiration on those ones. Um, let's see here. This one was just great on its own. I don't know. It just felt good. So, and I don't want to focus on any person because you don't want any copyright problems down the road if they don't want to be seen onto it. So I really, if there's people involved. I don't want anybody staring at the camera unless I got written papers from them. And that's just good practice because that can really backfire on you. Uh, the church for the baptism this one was i mean i always bring up the darts i always play with the levels to give them contrast they don't need to see everybody in there right now but because the priests contrast so much from the rest of them and so does the baby and the church background which was one of the nicest churches i think we ever filmed into uh, it kind of took care of a lot of the work uh, that's my daughter and my father that was such a fun video and yes even if we have a business we can still shoot family stuff once in a while and that one i wanted to make it fun and uh it was just a good feel that day and i liked the footage so i just wanted to try to use it somewhere this car one was great this was a hard time to film especially for a camera like mine that sensor's not so big there was a bit of noise in here but i just shot the blocks pretty high up isolating everything and let that sun do the job just that contrast alone it's it's kind of eye-catching for a dark picture so uh this one here is something i have to go back and fix now because i want to do it again and move her over more because of course then she's blocked by the uh, by the 4k logo but that's all part of the learning process so okay well i'll take that off here for a few minutes we'll get back to you guys uh, so there was a little tutorial about mm. how we use, uh, Andre uses uh, Photoshop for doing thumbnails. Uh, I wanted to add to what you're saying and emphasize even more uh, that um, if you can do a separate picture of uh, something that you intend to put as a thumbnail, uh, if you can, that's fine. Use your footage uh, as a still. But uh, I find it's just a better quality. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, if you can combine uh, your video and put uh, as an actual still, as your uh, thumbnail. Yep. So that would be my uh, photographer yep. uh, tip and trick. Matt Cro uh, by Coke Oregon says you can mirror the images. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> so especially the thumbnail, I mean, you know, people get it and it's, it's more standing out. You get so much freedom with the thumbnail that you can really bring up contrast that would not pass for a, a still photo being shown on, on uh, oh my God, Instagram, excuse me. But that's the glory of it. But you really want to be seen. And that contrast makes, in my opinion, is what sells pictures, uh, sells thumbnails pictures. Because that's what draws them out of the other 30 that people are looking at. Uh, Linus Tech Tips gave a great example. You know, when people were picking on these new thumbnails and doing the, uh, and the faces and all that. Like he said, do you think I want my kids seeing me look like that? Unfortunately... That's what people go for now. That's the big click. I don't want to say bait because that's not fair. Because I always associate clickbait mostly with uh, deceiving. But they got to be in your face. That's what the people are looking for. If it wasn't working, why would a channel with five and a half million do it? You know, you always got to ask yourself that. We are hard on big channels and think they're selling out and stuff. 
they're doing stuff for a reason and that's what you learn is from these guys because they've already paid all the money to have it analyzed they get the access to the uh, algorithms that we don't get to see so i'm really trying to watch what other people do i don't want to copy them i just want to learn from them and find our own way that we're able to do it so I think the best way and fast way of doing the comparison is when you're doing your thumbnail, uh, look at the four, first four or five uh, YouTube videos that pop up on your screen yep. when you open YouTube and uh, just see, compare what you are having on your screen, what you're working on, and what are the first five ones. Does your jump out? Does yep. it look different than those four or five? Then you're probably on the right track. Yep. If uh, it's kind of look the same, well, maybe you've got to work on it a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> And that's part of the learning process. Never be shy to go and, and see an, uh, 10 tutorials how to do the same thing. I always do that because everybody has a different way of looking at the world, so to speak. And there's some great, great resources out there to help you achieve that. You don't have to do it alone. I, we mentioned that I was studied photography, video, uh, videography, uh, editing in 2000. I would have given my life to have the tutorials that are out today for absolutely nothing. It, it's unbelievable. Anything you can think of. I've thought of some of the most bizarre things to try and do in a video thing. I was so unique to go and do a search and find out there's five tutorials on how to do it. And that's okay because I can learn from them and, and put my own spin onto it. So I'm glad, just glad they're out there. It saves me days of whacking around through Premiere, through settings, just trying to, to figure out what to do next. So, uh, yeah. And, and like, uh, uh, Star Travel Tips was asking about how to grow your channel. Uh, and Susie Channel was saying the thumbnails are key. Well, it always starts with something. And yeah. as we know, uh, you know, when we when there are 10 or 20 suggested videos, how are you clicking on the video that you want to watch? Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly how you're going to look at yours. Yeah. And, and, and that is part of the key how to grow your channel is to attract the attention and uh, making somebody to click either because it's a thumbnail that attracts or it's interesting or maybe funny uh or it's a great title and something enticing or in even better if it's both yeah uh, right uh, if they're clicking then the next step is how to gain uh their viewing time by keeping their retention the, these thumbnails there's uh, peter mckenna i mean once again they're all so engaging I, the, the quality is there every one of them could be almost like hung in a gallery and that's what his claim to fame has always been. It starts right in the thumbnail. He has this way of kind of drawing people in. He'll take even the most basic thing and make a talk every time. And this is in a small square that's very hard to see. And that's once again taking help from somebody who is running with it. Uh, we all can't be like him. I can't be like him. You can't. We all have to be ourselves. But we can also take some instruction along the way and learn from people's good point. Also, there are mistakes, too. That's another thing, too, is to learn what not to do. We've been trying to do that now with video streams, like trying to watch what other people are doing and trying to find our own voice. If you're using TubeBuddy, uh, there's an option of uh, trying different thumbnails at the same time and seeing which ones yes. better, uh, better respond. So you can actually upload uh, through there, uh, let's say, two different thumbnails that are different and see which ones get clicked on more. So if you have upgraded version of TubeBuddy, then check that out. Uh, well, uh, the next uh, question. Oh, Camaro Time is here. Welcome, Camaro Time. Yes, and everybody else Yes, joined, happy trail. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my, there's so many uh, people. Shout out. Oh, this is so Hello. nice to see. Halos and Heavens are uh, back again as well. That's great. Great to see some regular faces here. ATGH Travel. A Reese's Miller Road Adventure. Yeah, it's been on for a while. Hungry I Trophy I'm... Troopers here in the house. Happy Trails Hiking. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, there's quite a lot of you guys oh, today yeah. here. That's amazing. Again, if you have any questions, drop it in. We're still yep. getting to the questions that I have copied here. So. Uh, don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, so uh, what could we add? Since we started talking about YouTube, uh, I kind of do the questions in a bit random manner. <laughs> uh, since we started about uh, growing the channel, uh, what else would you say? So the title, the thumbnail, what would be the top three, top four things? Title, thumbnail, your tags. I mean... Every, the, the thing about YouTube is everything is so crucial in the end. Uh, don't you agree with that? Yes, I think uh, everything you know? works in conjunction. Uh, 
is definitely a part parts yeah. of it uh, yeah. you know you gotta attract people and then you're gonna attract their attention and then they leave them like it's you're gonna look at this as a step-by-step -step, yeah. uh, basically thing uh, but it all works in conjunction definitely sure. they all complement each other and it's as, as the more you can keep every one of them t tight the more everything works the old expression like the weakest link in the chain watch any tv show and watch the ending credits where they spend two minutes thing you know listing everybody who helped make it take all of them and put your name in front of them and that's what you are <laughs> you are everything from beginning to end and that's a lot of pressure sometimes but that's how we learn and you, you're going to find more as you're doing it. It's going to become more of a routine practice. Like Xenia, I owe her so much for tags because tags was always something I I'm, would say better at titles. She's better at tags. And we've mm -hmm. kind of helped each other grow in that some. And they are important. Some people say they're not, and they'll say, oh, Casey Neistat doesn't put any tags. Well, he can afford not to. Exactly. He's earned the right not to have to worry about tags. Us, unfortunately, we're still up and coming. We do. Oh. Things about all these little things like tags, for example, they might not be as important separately. But the thing about YouTube and algorithm <laughs> is uh, that everything has to work in conjunction. So everything has to be in order. As I always compare uh, YouTube algorithm or creating the, the back of the, YouTube, of the YouTube videos, so to say, is uh, having a closet in order or wardrobe yeah. in order. Everything has to be there. No, separately tags probably are not as important because we don't get as much uh, search on it because we're not still in, in, in that trending part. But mm -hmm. if you don't have them, that's minus one in your algorithm. Uh, the same as if your title, description, and the tags don't coincide with each other. Yes, it might not be so important, but if you don't have it, it's again minus one. So there you have minus two. Yeah. Also, but with together with tags, right? Yeah. So separately, these little things maybe don't have as much importance. But YouTube is all about having everything intact, everything, every little detail yeah. there. It is a lot of hats to wear. Yeah. But you can handle it, and you can do it. And there's lots of people done it, and you can do it. we got a very technical question here from James Cox. I have a question. How many live streams a week are you guys going to do? LOL, you guys are awesome. You are not nervous anymore. You are so professional. Wow. I think we're uh, still a bit nervous. Yes, yeah, so, but what a compliment to come from, <laughs> from somebody <laughs> like James. You, and, yeah, thank uh, you so much. Uh, Coming in again, and yeah. tweeting our uh, yes. our stream. I just was checking out our Twitter, so thank you so much. For James has been a great support a right from the get go, and I mean, I hope we've been with him as well. And it's really one of those examples of a relationship that started off by chance and has grown. And uh, I was only so glad to have you here, and thank you so much for the kind words. That's why I was smiling when you were reading because it caught me. Uh, yeah, I gotta stop doing that. I think she's still gonna black out my screen on me because I'm I get too caught up reading the, the comments and then forget I'm yeah, on. If I'm talking about the serious subject and suddenly hear uh, a, a laugh, that's because yeah. Andrew is reading your comments while I'm talking. <laughs> Um, we mentioned about the uh, doing the titles and tags. Uh, Three Star Traveler says has a problem uh, like doing a title. Like, how do you? You say that you yeah. love doing titles, and I always have a problem, yeah. even with my photos. I rather have three dots or <laughs> yeah. no comments, right? It's it's the hardest thing ever to to make a title to my photos. Uh, so how how do you how do you do that? I sometimes sometimes I just see him just sitting there. It's like oh, I know it, and it's there. How does it happen for you? Titles are just like writing songs. And I don't know if you're all aware of this. I used to work for a really big music company, and I used to do all the advertising for some big lines. And that's where I kind of got baptized by fire for doing tit for titles for ad ads and magazines, uh, promotions and stuff. And I found them one of the hardest things to get used to. And what you might think is funny and droll the next one is offensive or the ne or completely pointless to the third it's concise it doesn't always have to sound like a used car salesman though like and that's what's happening i notice on youtube sometimes it's like bye 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 sell 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 it doesn't have to be that either uh once again we're talking about Peter McKinney. you know sometimes they use this stuff like uh this uh I This cube cost me two people, but there's also the other times too. Uh, take a moment out of your video that you think really stands out and try and sum it up in five words what that moment is. That a lot of times too can, uh, it gives you, uh, it, it, you'll create a feel for it. Like I said, just like writing for a song. 
it, it's got to be something short, not patronizing, and not too in your face. I believe are the lines you don't want to cross with it. That's where you'll gain the most respect if you do and catch a lot of eyes at the same time. You can do some clickbaitish ones. Once again, like I say, not the deceitful type, but more if it's something huge. Uh, 500 foot ship sails across harbor well that's okay because there was a 500 foot ship that sailed across the harbor you're not lying there and then with that one in conjunction show that ship big don't show it off in the distance behind a bunch of buildings and that zoom in and show the closest most unbelievably eye-catching shot of that boat plowing through the water you don't want it in the vista. So don't put an elephant and title it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but you can send that most is the fastest most in the world and put some uh, the, the lines I did a while ago, the motion blur behind it, fade it out and may, give it some depth, make it interesting to people. Uh, it's, it's what the title of the song is. And think about when you were, I don't know if everyone will remember this, but when we used to have jukeboxes and you go to look at songs, yes, there's some we knew. But once in a while, if you think about it, there's always those titles that kind of catch your eye that you weren't familiar with the song. Uh, there's a great, uh, the gentleman's not here tonight, but uh, oh, what was it? Old, what's his hand? His channel's name? Old But Not Old but not Dead or something like that. So that's a fact. And it just, out of everybody that was streaming that night, it was actually on one of James Cox's uh, I'm a Creator uh, live streams. And it stuck out. And I literally had the message to the guy, go check his channel message them and i'm subbed around this one because i'm like I, I just love the name like it just stuck out like a sore thumb and uh, it's catchy and the same music does you have certain songs you're going to hear and you're going to almost be drawn to the title before you even hear one note come off of it and um, yeah yeah and, and for sure you can uh, try and do the uh, algorithmic titles uh, as i'm calling them you know how to and uh, putting the number in your title like five top things and all that but again, if you're still a starting up channel, uh, the competition of those titles are going to be big. So yeah. it might be clickbaity, but you've got to see how much competition is there. There's huge competition about how to do a Photoshop on, on my pictures. Well, you're, yeah. you're just a starting channel. You're not going to put it in your title because most likely you're not going to get clicked on. And also always, uh, I find when I have struggling with titles, I ask myself, well, would I click on it if I see it? Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's I think it's a good perspective to have in general when we create something, videos, photos, uh, anything on uh, that that we share with public. Would I enjoy it? Was I would I click on it? You yep. know, uh, I, I I think so. It's finding a fine line between not being a wallflower or being the obnoxious guy at the party. You're always trying to walk that line. You want to keep the integrity of what you do, but you also need to promote yourself. And yeah. that's hard for a lot of people. Don't feel alone. That I think that's probably if you ask most YouTubers, most of them would probably put that in their top three of the hardest things to do here, is to promote themselves. And you got to, uh, you got to believe in your work. You got to believe in your message. You got to stand out by it. To me, a good thumbnail with a good tag is like a seal of approval on a good product. Yeah, uh, like Rosarian Buck is saying, turn every title into a question. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, instead of I broke my glasses versus how did i broke my glasses yeah uh, that would part would be better uh also matt cook oregon agreed to what i was saying earlier that try looking at a page of thumbnails with some being yours and see if they stand out or not of course. So, uh, for sure for sure uh a, a very important question uh, from benjamin chavez was is it okay to use part of a video of other youtuber if you're doing shout outs to that youtuber well that is a very tricky question and became kind of a uh bit of an issue a couple of weeks ago in theory yes if you watch um i don't know if you guys know about them but h3 productions went through a whole lawsuit they did his critiquing they were taken to court the guy said that they were mis uh, misusing his content you're, as long as you're not showing the whole video in its entirety with no commenting no nothing just saying i take uh, i'm just gonna look here uh and take Matt Cook's video, show it for four minutes, and then shut it off and say it was mine, then you're right into a legal territory. But be very careful to get the person's permission first. It's a good way. It's a, Even though you might even be legal in the end, it could cost you many thousands of dollars in lawyer fees just to find out that you were right and nobody still wins. Ask the person first. 
ask them, listen, do you mind? I'm doing a shout out. Do you mind if I take, you know, 20 seconds or so to your video? Uh, most of them are going to be more than happy to do so. And everybody's happy with the answer. And there's no locking horns. Uh, a lot of people have been struggling with all this because it's new to everybody. And, and, and you can't have all the answers when you start here. But just just ask the person. It's a better way to do it. And everybody will go DM them. If they don't see your DM, go to one of their videos, watch them and say at the end, oh, I sent you a DM. Can you look at or Twitter, whichever one you choose to use. And uh, you you won't end up with any problems. It'll be a good experience for everybody. Uh, your girl is here, Sparkle by Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sparkle. Yes, and yeah. I just wanted to add that in the United States, those are their fair use. Um, as you mentioned, age three. Uh, yeah. That's how it went to. And yes, you can use, but I agree to what Andrew is saying. The same goes with pictures. Some people just take them and use them. And I, for example, I wouldn't mind <clears throat> when people use for example, by pictures with, without uh, getting paid for it. Yeah. Uh, but I just would like to be credited for it. Exactly. So I, I think uh, it, it's, uh, I agree to everything, <clears throat> excuse me, what Andrew is saying, but always credit yes. whoever you're referring to. Always put a credit down in the description, uh, a link to uh, a video or the site or where they can actually go and check out uh, that YouTuber that you're giving a shout out. But better off to yeah. ask, as, as uh, lots of yeah. people were actually suggesting the same thing. So. Like, once again, we always go to the big guys and see how they do it. Linus Tech Tips, they have their live stream every Friday. And they uh, that's the one time of the week they're live. And they're doing, like, we're doing sharing pages and that. They're very, very, very conscious of always mentioning this page uh, or was uh, from such and such a site. And the comment was originally made by such and such a source. You always want to give all the information that's there. If you're showing somebody's site, maybe just do an overlay, which is the type as well on the video down the lower corner, you know. Uh, why take something so positive and it end up becoming a negative, even if you were in the right? It, it, it's not worth the, the trouble. So, yeah, just make sure you take care of them, that they're, they've been asked in advance and you credit them. And everybody will be good, and it's a it's a great thing for everybody. Uh, to me, it's such an honor for somebody to want to talk about your channel. Uh, any publicity is great publicity. So uh, yeah, and uh, thank you very much for supporting us and supporting each other as well. I see there's some chat going on about supporting other channels. Please go yes, on other channels exactly. as well. Uh, if you're here uh, in the chat, you're already supporting us. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and if you see somebody you haven't checked out yet, go over and check it out. That's what we're here for, is trying to expand our community and see what amazing creators are there. So uh, nobody's offended. Uh, it's all good. Uh, just guys keep supporting each other. Oh, okay? Just one second. Uh, nobody gamer is leaving. Uh, you wrote, sorry, Pusha, if I have done something wrong. You can let me know later. Yeah, no, that's that's what that's what I was addressing before. There was a little chat about supporting other channels, which is great. Oh, that's amazing. That's, yeah, that's no, great. Definitely, uh, please. Yeah, support other channels. That's all good. Nobody's offended. No, no, <laughs> that's what yeah. I was referring to. And that's the one thing we would never want to have here. We don't want divisive lines. We don't want. We want everybody to get along. And, and please, if somebody does something, this is a side note. Us or somebody in the chat room or something like that does something that might uh, offend or upset or anything, please let's not overreact. Let's talk about it. Let's, because uh, a lot of people sometimes are doing this. Everybody's at different levels. And I've watched that happen sometimes. And people do and say something. And it's just because of inexperience or in the moment or it was taken. I, I have so much trouble typing because I'm always worried I'm going to be taking the wrong context. So always take a chance to ask the other person. You can say it, well, but just hopefully everybody ends up with a good feeling when they leave from here. That's what we really hope for. Yes, Joe, you can use our intro, your next video, credit <laughs> us for it, and then tell everybody to go and yeah. subscribe to us. <laughs> yes, for sure you can. You can <laughs> put it through and just and sink your face on top of mine. I know you want to be standing by Xenia. The two faces, when the two faces got to go, I know I'm it, so... Yeah. <laughs> you're like you're like bottle caps between the two of you. Or reuse without modification. Yeah. <laughs> Can I use one of your photos to make Photoshop after effects to and I'll credit you in the Can I use one of your photos to make a Photoshop of After Effects tutorial and I will credit you in the video and description? Uh, uh Resorian Buck was asking. Sure, I just would probably would like to know which one, but yep. uh, I don't see a problem with that. Yep, definitely. Just send us a message in Twitter or Facebook yep. which, uh, for sure. Why not? It's awesome. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for choosing us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Um, talking about uh, Photoshop, by the way, uh, do I fill people out of the image? Arizarian Buck do asked uh, a while ago. Uh, hmm, good question. Um, I think so sometimes when I do take a picture uh, of uh, a bigger landscape and uh, maybe I haven't, while taking picture, I haven't noticed that there is a person um, somewhere in the corner and it, it's not really part of the composition, I might clone it out. Uh, I don't uh, fill out people in, in uh, portraits. Uh, I think nobody really can do uh, as good as a job to do it the way that it won't get uh, noticed. Um, I think the, the biggest part of the shot is creating the shot before you actually press the shutter button uh, to try and make sure that you have as less of these details to get rid of after in the after um, uh, in the processing part of, of the photo of the video. For me, uh, I see the after process part uh, as a creative part. It's not about as much as getting rid of the stuff that is wrong. Although, yes, you can adjust details. Maybe there is a little bit of noise or, or maybe there is a hair in the eye of a person or, or something that you would want to clone out uh, that happens, uh, like things like that. But for me, I see uh, these software programs more as a creative outlet where I can try things and, and see how it looks. Uh, it's more like a canvas painting for me. So. Uh, to answer uh, a question uh, in a long way, no, I don't fill people most of the time. Um, also, I wanted to add about planning shots or make art out of the what we find that Biker Bushcraft asked before uh, and Andrew answered. Um, there are two types of different photos that I take. Uh, uh, if I take a shot that is made for uh, family portraits or beauty portraits or, or more like a photo session shoot, then most of the time I plan uh, the shoot partly in my head. I, I uh, choose where we go or if, if the client chooses it, I would like to see it in advance, at least if not before that, at least uh, half an hour maybe before I go to the photo shoot uh, and actually do it so I can get familiar with the place, choose the best uh, locations, see with the shadows, with the light, and just to, to get familiar as more. Uh, I, uh, in my head, I, I kind of visualize the uh, poses that I might use, uh, uh, the composition that I might do, uh, but I don't do it like book by book or, or I don't write everything down and okay, okay, we got to do all these 10 shots and if I don't, oh my God, <laughs> no, uh, it's kind of like pinpoints that I'm trying to go through and keep in mind while I'm doing the photo shoots like that. Um, just to keep me more focused and keep me on track. And also because if I do a wedding or event shoot, oftentimes clients want certain types of shoots, especially in weddings, you know, like a, a bridal look or a, a father and daughter dance or, or, or rings, you know, there are certain types of shots that are always there. So you just kind of, those are in shot lists that have to be done. And then the other part is more of a creative pictures and more of the landscape and nature photo, uh, photography that I do, uh, which uh, it's more relies on the way I see things. So if my eye sees uh, something that, oh my God, this is great, or oh, that would uh, make a great photo, then I take a photo. I, I carry uh, a camera with me all the time, well, 75% of the time. Um, and I sometimes I, I do it because I just want to take pictures of certain things. But sometimes, as I was saying before, I do it because I want to train myself of taking pictures in whatever uh, situation possible, even when it's uh, not a good weather or there's nothing really to shoot. I want to train myself to see so I can shoot anywhere so I can actually be better when there is chance to take good pictures. Uh, so that would be my answer to that. I'm coming. I'm just doing a coffee run. <laughs> uh, um, then uh, also, if we are still talking about my uh, photography, uh, Gre Gregory Salvatore was asking me, what is uh, your go-to wedding photography setup? Uh, he's talking, he uses Canon 6D with battery grip, 24-7TL with a star filter, and 580EX. Uh, to flash. Wow, that's a lot of gear. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can say that. You guys um, are going to make us look bad. You're going to be surprised with what we Actually, would... today, Sandra was showing uh, oh, give you a little bit of break. Sandra <laughs> was uh, showing yesterday his gear, and we were talking about my photography yesterday. So this uh, Grigori, uh, your question goes right in time. Uh, I like to carry the least possible equipment around me as possible. Uh, so, because as Andrew was saying, my camera during the events oftentimes is just over my shoulder uh, or in my hands with, the, uh, with it being constantly on. Um, and I don't want something heavy. I don't want to be logging a backpack on me all the time. It's also because if it is in the wedding, I try to dress appropriately and I don't want to um, look like a hitchhiker in the middle of the wedding. <laughs> No offense. So uh, that's why my go-to camera is still my Sony, uh, my Sony A6000, uh, as you can see. And uh, I have three uh, lenses. Uh, one of them, which you can see uh, now on, uh, this is a um, 50 millimeter prime lens. Uh, prime means that it doesn't have any zoom. Uh, uh, so the way it is, that's how it is. Um, I got it for weddings, actually, because oftentimes weddings and events are in a low light and oftentimes in an awful light. Mm -hmm. If you're getting married, please don't do a bluish purple light because yes. it's the most awful light that mm -hmm. can be there for photos and videos. And it's mostly there at them. That's yeah, all. that's what brides mostly choose. But, but it's not like if, if you're trying to take pictures for a wedding, ask them if they already planned for the light. Uh, because uh, oftentimes it's it's this awful purple light and it doesn't make for the pictures. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, getting back to my equipment. So this makes a really, uh, really good uh, pictures in low light because I can go as low as 1.7 aperture. I shoot manually. So uh, uh, that's what was important. I can also focus manually, kind of focus ring right there. And um, this is perfect. Um, for portraits, uh, for ring shots, uh, things like that. Uh, I oftentimes my go-to, I think, for uh, events as well, uh, is my 55 to 10 uh, zoom lens. Um, I like taking portraits when people don't know. So th this is my sneaky, yeah. sneaky lens. Yeah. <laughs> well, when people don't see, I take a close-up zoom of them and take uh, a nice, like, emotive photos. And then uh, the the other one is the one that came with a kit. Uh, oh, well, you're looking, Gregory, and had mentioned that that's only that is only uh, how do you write? That is only my to go. I also carry a seven uh, seventy two hundred and a seven D as a backup. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hats off to you, my well, friend. Well, uh, yeah, everybody has their own equipment, yeah. exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just really like to use as, as least as possible uh, at the spot, yeah. I like to move around. I, I'm like the wedding, if it's an eight-hour shoot, I'm on my feet eight hours. Like, I'm constantly shooting. I'm basically not sitting down. It's always Andrew the same We're way. supposed to get a meal, of course, at any wedding, and I don't think we've – I think once maybe we got – Two bites out of one because we never stop. Yeah, because I just don't want to yeah. lose a, a, a nice shot or, you know. Uh, so, yeah, so we're always on our feet. And I can't imagine carrying Canon uh, or Nikon. <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you to Life uh, Life with Ken and Jane for coming. They have to go. Thank you so much for dropping by, guys. It's such a pleasure yes, to have you. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, and this is my kit uh, lens. This is what came with a, a camera itself. And I actually shoot, shot for a good two years with just this. Uh, it is a nice lens. Uh, you can have a good uh, wide uh, angle with it for landscapes. Uh, you, you can have it for portraits as well. But um, now, since I do have the prime lens, I mostly use uh, uh, the kit lens for landscapes just because it has this nice natural lens vignette thing that I like. Uh, so that's what I use it mostly for, uh, for street photography as well. But for weddings, definitely my prime for low light and the zoom lens 70 uh, to 10. Uh, so if that answers your question <laughs> for technicalities. And yes, I do have external, I do have a flashlight or flash, that's how I call it, but flash, I do have flash. Um, I have used it, uh, I'm not really enjoying it. I do have it with me in a separate bag was stored with a DJ, but I, I don't really use it as much. Also, we have video light uh, that we sometimes... Uh, um, uh, yeah. there. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have video light, this small little light. 
that Andrew sometimes uses or I use if we need to light something from the bottom, like rings, for example, or from our backlit situation like that. It's not very bright. Not very expensive and so <laughs> and not versatile. Very expensive. There you can see it right there. Uh, so we use that sometimes. Uh, but I mostly work with a natural light or mm -hmm. the light that is available at the event. It's also not very big, so it's easy to make gels for any kind of colored uh, uh, any kind of colored uh, sheets or anything like that fits so easy over it. You can make a thousand and one different lighting scenarios just with this. Uh, yeah, for sure, exactly. And, and he like, has five of those lights. Oh my god! But do, do you travel around in a micro bus when you shoot? Like you're you're our new hero. <laughs> yeah, and there's lots of photographers that have the, uh, the the big equipment bags and things like that. I find uh, I just find it's heavy. I I probably maybe I would do that too. But I just like to have the gear on me. And as I was saying in my previous in our previous live stream, oftentimes I have a camera on at all times. So that's why I have like five batteries on the go that I'm changing and charging all the time and go through them in an eight hour event, um, basically all through them, uh, because my camera is always on. Because I'm trying to get these detailed, not stage moments, uh, mm. I, I, I don't want to be handling all the equipment around me. But again, uh, there's it's how many photographers there are, there's different approaches for so everybody exactly. has their, their own thing. Um, you know, in your Camaro, yes. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> that is true. Oh my God, yes. Um, Trainman, hello. I hope you're enjoying yourself tonight. It's so good to have you guys here, like I said a while ago. I hope you're getting to mingle lots. Uh, Sticky Buds, love your work so professional. Uh, Sticky Buds, I went on the stream last night. What a ball. I swear to God, it's like the best after party for all the streams. We, I was half asleep. I went in and I just had such an amazing time. So um, just wanted to give you a shout out for that last night. I had a blast. Lots of laughs. Uh, Mill Hill Mud Mowers, very long day. Then tried to do a fast editing work. Yeah, exactly. I understand completely. We thought the live streams were neat until we realized now I think we're up to about a 16-hour day, I'd say, with the kids involved. So it's definitely makes uh, makes things more interesting. Uh, well, there's lots oh. of work involved in the live stream on before and after. As yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> because we're trying to create a thumbnail and then the graphics and, and the descriptions and tags and all that, the same as you would do on any uh, normal or regular uploaded video. So it's, it's not just the live stream during the live stream. It's also more work before and afterwards as well yeah, exactly exactly we didn't, uh, <laughs> we didn't anticipate, anticipate. but uh, as we're going to get our legs more things are starting to we're starting to find out a pattern that we want to go so you're going to probably see over the next what uh, we'll, we'll say fairly a week or so i think by then we'll have some of the kinks ironed out and what we want to do yeah we definitely want to schedule more as you see mostly we're on the nights between eight and ten i think that's starting to be a good time for us I would eventually like to try and do something earlier in the day at some point uh, to try and hit some of our uh, European followers. So maybe like a, a half show kind of then. But it's mostly going to be we want to meet with more people. We'll definitely want to have more of a format so we can say what's coming on each night. That's going to be because uh, of the support of you guys. <laughs> what do I say? You guys threw us in the water. I thank you very much. I mean, James Cox started all the I Am Creator uh, uh live streams he actually encouraged us yeah. to go and when we didn't uh, a week after appearing on his live stream he was bugging us and well what, what's up with you guys why are you not doing your live stream and we're like oh we're kind of shy yeah well now we're full force and full steam I, yeah i wouldn't say we're over our shyness completely yet but we're you guys have been uh, the best motivation anybody could ever ask for so if uh, you're yeah. looking for one of our live streams then uh, just hashtag live with pusa yep and you're gonna see if it's on and what is on and what is the subject hashtag live with pusa or go on our uh, uh, twitter page and you're gonna see because we're probably gonna continue on or uh, on tech talk uh, on tuesdays yep. uh, and uh, mondays probably with our uh, guests uh, hello monday with pusha studios as we were doing before uh, and Saturday Night Party with Push Studios. So yeah. just follow on. Uh, and, Definitely. Uh, and I want to do some off-the-cuff ones as well. Like, I want to leave like the odd time that's going to be more just interacting with you guys, bringing you guys on. Uh, I really want to start doing that, having a panel that's not planned. Just uh, 
I don't want to use off the cuff because James uses that already and he took an amazing name, so my hat's off to him. But just something where we can kind of get together and shoot around ideas and that. I'm I'm from a rural area in eastern Quebec, which is not far from the Maritimes, which is the eastern provinces in Canada. And I, I was always such a fan of the house party, which of course derives from because they're strongly connected to their Irish roots. And I always was hoping to have something like that here that we can get together and, and not be so official that we can just talk and, and share where there they do it mostly with music because one brings a mandolin, another one is two fiddle, another one is playing three guitars. I want to do that, but as a conversation style and discuss what we're doing here, discuss what people are, what their backstories are and what got them here. I've been preaching that since the beginning and that is really, really important to me and I believe Xenia as well as that community. For sure, as you're yeah. talking about that at the beginning, for uh, us, for me, uh, it's important to see who is behind the channels. As much as we're interested in your creations and want to know more, who is behind it? Yeah. Uh, I want to know more about you. Push a party. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love it. That's good. <laughs> we're going to take that in consideration, yeah. Gregory. I, like uh, I also love seeing we also love seeing how you guys are supporting each other yes. that's amazing uh building community uh that's great and yep. that's what uh, this is here for not just for us but for you guys too so you can go and see each other's channels maybe the ones that you haven't checked out yet and bottle caps i was waiting for you to come yes. back to answer your question by the way so welcome back <laughs> and just before you answer him i see smoking and grilling a b he says at Trayman, I'm number fifty. Nice channel. You see, there's another two from Canada that never met up and are connecting here tonight. You know, so that's what I mean. There is that, that feel too. We still got from I'm a creator. People joining each other and uh, just getting to see what everybody else is doing. Great connections. Uh, this is really nice to see. Chase Cox, uh, hi again. <laughs> I'm home waiting for pizza and wine. We would like some wine yes. too. That's gonna be great. Yep. Maybe on the weekend, wine with. That would be interesting. I like that. That would Thank be something. Thank you for ideas yes. again, James. Yep. They are cool ideas for us. Great inspiration. Yep. Thank you. Um, well, pizza doesn't sound too bad either right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Right? Thanks a lot, James. <laughs> are you sending mm, a couple of slices over? you should over? order one. <laughs> Any suggestions for Montreal? <laughs> like Tri-Sport, uh, TriStar Travelers. Found him today. He was uh, posted on, I forget who it was, but one of uh, our supporters pages i was watching the video and went and checked them out actually he did a, a video of travel of europe as well and one of the places the first one i think on the list that i checked was Ljubljana, which slovenia which is the picture behind my head and that's when i told them i love your video and you definitely got to come over and check out our live stream because you might recognize some something familiar in the back and now i see tonight he's having the time of his life he's getting to connect with a lot of uh other uh channels out here uh I think I he's a sold man on this, so that's great to see. Yes, definitely, mm. it's great. It's always great to see new people coming and joining uh, the community, and I'm just being there and coming back and back. And uh, one other thing, sorry to cut you off, on, but before I forget, guys, if you could tell your friends in any way, shape, or form uh, on YouTube, Facebook, whichever, about our live streams, that would be greatly appreciated. Because that helps us all grow as well, and not just for us to get more people watching our live streams and videos, but also that they can mingle in here as well and meet other people too. That would be a huge, huge plus. So if you could do that, uh, we'd be forever grateful. Uh, so James Cox is suggest uh, uh, suggesting pizza and wine with uh, Push Studio. So it's really catchy for live stream. Joey is saying kitchen party. Yeah. Well, maybe we should do one Combine, uh, Yeah. Uh, I, I could do some cooking, you could do some talking. Yep, no. right. Maybe that could be our off the cup. <laughs> that would be interesting. And once again, James, we're not taking that name, although it was we're a really good name. We're getting <laughs> yeah. inspired. We have in credit we have we did credit you a while ago for it. And and good on you for picking a great yeah. name for it. So that, that's a great idea though, both James and Joey. Maybe we could combine that. Uh, we'll definitely we'll think about it. Thank you guys. Uh there you go. You see, we are yep. all combining our all growing together, together. So so bottle caps since you're back here uh you guys are real pop leaders <laughs> yeah. in black again <laughs> lol yes uh definitely 
supporting yeah. uh, the, uh, our banner of uh, Push Studios, if you uh, look at our channel, is also on a black background. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we're supporting both. Yeah. <laughs> Through our channel, we're supporting the community and community yeah. our channel. So definitely. I mean, so we look the best in black. See, if we cover all this, we're eventually going to darken the lights and you'll just see our heads and nothing else. And that will be the two hour summary, kind of like puppets. So. Meme. Memes. Memes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, James found the Kool Aid. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> no, we can't replace wine with a Kool Aid. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no that's no. sacrilege. No, yeah. I said I'd be the Antichrist, but that's even going too yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, ASMR is asking if we hit 4,000 watch hours. Oh, we still got a while to go yet. So, <laughs> we're, we're, this is, uh, that's a work in progress, but every step counts. Every one of you guys helping we're getting counts, there. and we're definitely wanting to help you guys as well. So uh, don't forget to like, uh, to tickle the like button and show push how much we appreciate their support. Sticky Buds 420, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one probably one last technical question was that we got to address. Um, uh, Bottle Caps was asking about doing a photo of uh, Moon at night. If I can ask you to bring Instagram. Instagram? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I wanted to show an example of my picture while I'm talking about it. And Bottle Caps, can you please say hi if you're still there? If not, you'll have to go back to the stream and check this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So this is our Instagram, by the oh, way. Oh, I'm not sharing it yet. I thought you wanted a certain oh. page. So I'll just share it now? Uh, yeah, you can share it now. Okay. So you can see this is our Instagram at Push Studios. You can go and check it out and follow and check out all the pictures if you're interested in. Say hi. Uh, so I know it's you. Uh, and if you just scroll down and uh, we're going to try and find the picture of, um, of the moon right there. Click on that. Uh, okay, uh, so the question for Bottle Caps was about how to do a picture of the moon. Uh, the biggest problem uh, when people are trying to take pictures of the moon is that it gets overexposed. Uh, it's black um, and white at the same time. It's very white and very black. So the camera sensors are get all confused and they overexpose uh, uh, usually the, um, uh, the moon. So the, the best way, first of all, uh, you got to do it manually. Uh, and most likely on a tripod. I This shot that you can see right now, uh, we did it during the supermoon uh, after New Year's, the first supermoon we had this year. And uh, this was actually handheld, but most of the time I would suggest doing it on a tripod. And uh, the go-to thing to remember when you're trying to take a picture of it is to set your, the first uh, is to set your ISO speed on 100 or 200, if you can set it on 100, uh, then set your f-stop or aperture around 8 to 11. Uh, that will give you that better depth because if you put it in a more shallow depth of field, it, it's uh, not going to capture the depth uh, and the texture of the moon. And if you put it at um, uh, bigger depth of field, uh, then it's, it's just... Uh, gonna go past it and blow uh, blow out your picture completely so uh first is iso 100 to 100 then is aperture uh 8 to 11 and then adjust your shutter speed according to the other two uh, variables so if you have the tripod and you're using the tripod you can go lower on your shutter speed therefore uh if you can and you don't have a tripod and your hand hand holding uh, then you would have to go a bit higher to uh, reduce the blurring because you, what you've got to remember, moon is moving. It, it seems to you that it's not, but it's actually moving as you're taking a picture. So that's why oftentimes they come out blurry because you think, well, it's a still, still object in the sky, but no, it, it, it's not. It's, it's moving every millisecond as you're as you're looking at it. So so yeah, so three things, three and a half things: tripod, uh, ISO, hundred, two hundred f-stop 8 to 11 and shutter speed adjusted to that accordingly so that would be the answer okay so, i wish they'd find an easier way for screen sharing <laughs> that's my new <laughs> wish for google hangouts um bottle cat is saying he's using sony hands <coughs> uh, there is no setting 
I'm not familiar with Sony Handycam, so I can't exactly uh, tell you the, the way you should set up your camera for that. He's but, only got zoom on it, that's why. Yeah, but uh, it, the, the moon is very tricky to take pictures of. So most of the time, with automatic, you are not going to get that detail that uh, you're looking for. Uh, um, um, you know what? I will look into that, and, and I promise I will get back to that question uh, in our following live streams, okay? So what else do we have here now? Let's see. Do you have any more questions? Because I need to answer. Uh, no. Uh, well, I think I, an I answered all the questions that I had that copied over here. Um, <coughs> We have uh, some 15 minutes or so left. Yep. Uh, if you guys have uh, any more questions in our last 15 minutes, uh, please. Uh, uh, Tristar Travels, what photo editing program were you using earlier? I was using Photoshop. Uh, we are, yeah, I guess we'll call it uh, Adobe Fanboys. It's just because everything works so seamlessly. Uh, other people are using everything. Like well, the other night, I did a quick quiz on video editing, and everybody pretty much covered the gauntlet for uh, the gamut. Excuse me for what can be used. Um, I just like uh, Photoshop. So does Xenia, also because she uses Lightroom, which if you guys aren't familiar with, in a nutshell, it's basically she shoots in RAW, and RAW are huge files, about 50 megs, and there's almost no color in the shot, which she'll bring into Lightroom and then adjust and. Well, you just how would you just how would you describe Lightroom in it like in Linux? Um, yeah, uh, people used to use before Bridge for the same. So if you're familiar with Bridge, then I would say the Lightroom is kind of extension, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, up level of that. But yeah, I bring in the raw file and it processes raw because you can't use raw for anything. It has to be processed. It's not editing. It's processing because it has to bring back the colors and contrast and everything. Yeah. Uh, so I process that and then I apply sometimes a certain profile or I correct exposure or highlights if they're blown out somewhere or like things that are more about the general look of the picture. And then I bring it to Photoshop if needed to bring out more details, to clone some uh, discrepancies out if I need to, uh, to work on on like eyes for example if it's a portrait right i will bring it to photoshop because i want to zoom in closer and work exactly on that area so lightroom is for more general look of the picture although you can do detailed stuff i just don't do it as much there because i find that photoshop uh, photoshop uh, just does a better job with that so so that's why and i, I also use some of the plugins as well uh that kind of extend the, the functionality of either lightroom or photoshop um, but that again it depends how much you're working with your pictures i work with them every day so uh <laughs> i'm just looking here as a follow-up to it like asmr says wondershare is a nice cheap video editor definitely and not everybody's going to want to use premiere and i think it was uh where is it here? Uh, Smoking and Grill uh, with AB. PS and Lightroom are awesome. It has a learning curve, though. Exactly. And some people don't want to be bothered with that. And and it's understandable. Uh, Casey Neistat just brought that up recently because he gets a lot of questions why he's not using Premiere. He uses Final Cut Pro, and it's a very simple answer because I've been using it for the last 10 years. He would like to maybe eventually switch to it, but it's not hurting his career any the last time I checked. And he feels comfortable with it. It doesn't matter what I or the next person uses. I mean, I'll gladly answer mine that I use and why I do. But everybody has to find their own uh, their own setup, their own that they're comfortable with, and that's a big part of it. I'd be terrified to switch to another editor now. I was looking into DaVinci Resolve, and when they started talking about nodes and everything, and I just downloaded the trial version to kind of play with it, and I'm like. Because it's supposedly really good for removing noise. And my camera is a small sensor, so I do have to deal with noise when I'm shooting evening. Uh, is a real problem sometimes, or in ballrooms at weddings and stuff. But it's such a learning curve, I just haven't had a chance to really dive into it. So I'm not saying they're lying about it. I believe them completely, just that I don't have the time, the interest to get involved in that right now. 
Do you use Lightroom in all Camaro time? Yes, like Xenia said. Always in for. conjunction. Almost yeah. always I use both. Again, as I said, it has to be processed before it can be edited. So it always goes through Lightroom. By the way, I forgot to add that Photoshop, the, one of the latest updates now, you actually can do raw files uh, through Photoshop as well. Yes. If you have them. But I would still suggest if you're doing one or two, then but if you have like hundreds of them, use Bridge or, or, or Lightroom for sure. It's an amazing program, and so, and and like I said, uh, for you that don't know, like shooting raw is large files with lock on. My camera, the video camera, doesn't shoot raw, so I fake it by bringing down all the, the saturations and everything down to. I think mine goes to minus five. I'd bring it to minus three. Uh, keep the contrast up a bit, but still, that's pretty flat. I think minus two or minus one I use, and then I bring that all back in post production, because as the hardest thing is if you're relying on whatever standard color your camera shoots at every camera is overblown they always do and it might look nice at first it's the thing is when you bring it into post-production software and you put it against the spectrum you have a circle and it shows you edges of your reds your greens your blues your cyan your magentas you'll notice that it goes away off the pattern and then if you look at your uh, scopes you'll see that the blacks are crushed the the, the whites are, are way up and you can't color balance that. So the issue is if you shot in the morning at the lake and then the afternoon by the mountains and then in the evening at a little restaurant, you can't get that feel back. And you wonder why some videos that everything looks like it's even, even though it's different times of day, it still has that same kind of feel. It's because that's what they're doing. They're shooting in raw and then adding the color back in in post-production after they color balance. Because some shots might have too much red in the morning. Because you'll have, like, in your scopes, you'll have red, green, blue, which, of course, your RGB for your screen for your screen view. You can bring down your red some and balance them out more. And instead of them being crushed right at the bottom of all the blocks, you can bring up your shadows, and you'll go up, 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 until you see the bottom start to lift. And that means you have a nice, even color. That's why sometimes you'll notice blocks on a lot of cameras. You can't see anything when the blocks is because they're so crushed together with the shadows, there's no um, detail left in them. And that way you can bring them back up. So um, that's a, a big thing that we do uh, in post-production. And uh, it's a great way to match shots from all different types of areas. So uh, if you can do that, uh, we can look up and find some videos that are really good at explaining color. It makes your life so much easier later on when you try to uh, make your videos. And they really have a conformity to them. Think of any full, full feature film, a short film they always look the same. They don't look like they were shot with different cameras. Even though the lighting might be different, the time of day different, the mood, it's still within that realm because that's how they match them. Uh, yeah, and there are different software out there, even for free, that you can uh, uh, use to uh, edit your photos or uh, video, even online, just upload and use it there. Uh, you know, it all depends how deep you want to go into editing and do you need it or not. It's yeah. not needed if you don't want it. Uh, it's it's not the rule that it has to be done like that. Um, Reese's Mill Off-Road Adventure asked about how do you go live on Google Hangouts? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, James has a video that he usually recommends on his channel. I'm, I'm, uh, I think it's Ray Hayden that maybe made it. But it's, uh, he would be the best person to speak to because somebody's, like I said, there's always somebody who's already done what you're looking for. It's quite easy. Uh, we figured it out. James had given us like a walkthrough one night after we did a show with him. And now with this new uh, Go Live, it even makes it easier. We haven't tried that one yet. We always set as event. But uh, it, it's basically going in this way we do. It's just go in and set an event. Just pick your time, starting date, and end date give it a title, same as you do for any other video, and that event's ready, and then you can just click, I forget the name, what does it say, uh, start your broadcast, or? Uh, set up your event, even now, as a, as no, but last that when that's done, like when you have it, to go and see your opening screen where you can see yourself, uh, uh, it's start, uh, start, start broadcasting. 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 Yeah. And then there's just one more button you'll get on, you'll be able to see yourself, make sure everything is good, you can see your audio levels down the bottom. And then you then you just click the green button below, and then when you're done, you hit stop. Yeah, uh, you are uh, uh, even now when you just press the cam little camera button, the new feature it actually asks you to go live now or to use Hangouts. So if you go live now, you are just using your camera what you have now on your phone, and if you to use Hangouts, then it offers you an option to create an event, which follows what Andrew was uh, mm. talking afterwards. And if you're talking about guest appearing, we just usually send a link. Uh, 
<clears throat> through the messenger and mm -hmm. just click on that to make sure that you have your Hangouts account. Um, and uh, that's it. Yep. It's quite easy. It, yeah. It, it, it was kind of, it's one of those things that you're nervous to do at first, especially because it's going to be live. So it's not like you're just flailing around in your room and it doesn't work out, so be it. But yeah, it ended up, uh, mm -hmm. it, James wasn't lying. It was pretty easy. So uh, I got to say. The learning curve has been tricky with PS. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of things there. And again, it depends how much do you need of that. I'm definitely not, I'm not using 100% of it, although I work with it every day. But uh, again, if guys you are interested in any particular thing of uh, uh, Photoshop or other Premiere or Lightroom, we can definitely do a sh screen sharing tutorial or things like that. Just suggest the topic. My uh, my instructor when I was in two thousand when uh, he was a Photoshop master, and he was certified by Adobe, and he told me something that stuck with me to this day, and it's still right as now in two thousand eighteen as it was in two thousand. It's all except for a few that dedicate all their living moments to Photoshop will never master it all because it's used for so many events. People use it uh, for three D elements. Uh, people use it for film. People use it for magazine ads. People use it for anything that involves a graphic and film. Touches on Photoshop in some way. Yes, there's other programs that compare, but we'll call that Photoshop in a nutshell. It, it, that's why it's so important to look up as many tutorials on what you need to do with it. Because there's tools that after all of these years of me using it, and believe me, I'm not a master. I'll be the first to say it. There's still many things that mystify me, and I'll go in and have absolutely no clue what to use because I've never had to use them. So it's one of those programs that you kind of have to learn the elements that are important for what you're doing. So don't feel bad if you don't know it. In I love shortcuts. Who could remember the shortcut? I think it's literally three pages of shortcuts. I don't use shortcuts. No, in the end, you don't even have enough fingers. I look at some of them, it's like, how do you, it's like when you used to watch somebody playing Twister and wonder how they could stand in that position. It's like, I'm looking at these shortcuts, like how could, it would take more time for me just to get my fingers there than to go to a menu. Also a tip, uh, if you are using any of these uh, programs, uh, there are lots of free templates there for things you do. So if you are not willing to create everything from scratch, Use free tablets. Just when you do a search for them, look for Creative Commons uh, um, 0, 0.0, I think it is, yeah. so that you can uh, use it with modification and without referring to the source. And you can download templates for Adobe Premiere for uh, openings. You can download templates for doing certain graphics and collages. Like whatever your mind can think of, just put it in a search. And put as a search filter for uh, having it as a Creative Commons or, or okay for reuse, and and then you don't have to uh, build things from scratch if that's not your thing. Sorry, and, sorry, verdict squad for the disconjointed sentence. I hit enter by accident. So yes, it is welcome. Great to have you. And uh, uh, go back to where we all started. Uh, wanted to give a shout out to I'm a creator uh, uh, since. Uh, uh there was a question from three star travelers about uh i'm creator can we explain i'm a creator uh what is it and how how it's working also uh a shout out to jessica lee uh she hit thousand Excellent. today that's congratulations uh and uh, uh 500 for yeah who got 500 gregory I just seen it. Now it, it, you guys are talking so fast. <laughs> and one side note, that's a part of it. Because we're doing the stream, I can't go and check out anybody right now. But please, if you haven't checked us out already, uh, if you can, you like what we're doing, subscribe and leave a comment. And I'll definitely check you guys out after. Because uh, I'm always looking for new channels. I, I want to check out anybody I possibly can. Yeah, so Gregory uh, hit uh, 500 just now. So congratulations on that, too. And yes, please come back after the live stream. Like and comment on the live stream. Leave a comment down below. Say that you were here. Comment on how did you like it. If you still have a question about something that we could include in our next uh, Tuesday Tech Talk, please mm -hmm. leave it in our comments as well. Uh, and share it, share it, share it. So the more there is people, the, the merrier it is, uh, the more fun we have, I think. So uh, I'm a creator. Uh, uh, it's a great community. Uh, I call it a family because it has become such uh, where we all support each other uh, by checking each other's um, uh, channels, uh, videos, uh, commenting, liking and supporting, uh, uh, tweeting it out, sharing and just creating a great community of supportive uh, 
uh, creatives. We've been with this. All of this tonight is a, uh, fundamentally came from I am a creator, where we started and got to meet people. I mean, it's grown us a lot. The old story we had 42 on February 2nd. And tonight, let's see what we have. Let's just for the fun of it, or we'll see where we're at right now. 1,043 subscribers. So I think that's as good of an endorsement as any, I would say. So, and that's great. And like I said, it's not just about the one. I'm getting great comments on my video. I have people coming back now, and, that, and that's what means a lot to me. I appreciate the numbers, but it's the uh, return visits that, and people getting to check out Xenia stuff as well on uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, it, it's it's been nothing but beneficial that way for all of us. So, uh, and a lot of people I see here tonight as well, I know have benefited from it. So, uh, yeah, it definitely expands uh, farther on uh, than just YouTube. Uh, we definitely have seen the increase of uh, supporters and connections. I call it connections because yeah. it's not just hitting the button on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, so, any of you guys, if you have these social accounts, please come and visit us and say hi. We would like to connect. Because Trey Man says I only have 51. Exactly. So you can head over after the I Am Creator. And uh, James has made a playlist. You can put your video in there and start watching other people's stuff, comment on it, and they really come over and watch your stuff too. There, I see. Uh, uh, oh, I love that name, Sidewalk Clothes, S-Y-D-E. How amazing is that? He got you. See, you're growing already. So <laughs> yes, and definitely check out the new channel. I am creator. Hashtag I'm creator. YouTube channel. Hashtag I'm creator. Uh, Twitter account. Uh, I'm creator YT. Yeah. Uh, because uh, that is eventually going to be our co-op uh, channel and account uh, where all the stuff around the community is going to be um, uh, shared as well. Because Camaro Times said, "Wow, congrats, Pusha Studios." Yeah, exactly. I mean. And it's not, it was so, you notice my videos went to a peak because I just stopped making them. I was so fed up of making them and just nobody seeing them. Or I had two that really took off, but they still never jump with subscribers. And this, the nice thing about what happened out of a bad situation with YouTube starting to push for this is it actually opened up the floor that we can finally, without worry, go and ask other people to come and check out our sites, our channels. Because before that, I, I know myself and a lot of other two were worried that, well, they're just going to mark us as spam or we're going to get flagged and then we're going to lose it. So this kind of opened up the floor for us to be a little more open and, and go and like other people's stuff and say, by the way, you know, I have a piece at the end I always put, you know, that we're from a husband and wife team from Montreal. We do rural and urban scenes, blah, blah, blah. That part I copy and paste because it's the same part. But I always write two or three lines before that, uh, I'm commenting on what they do and love what they do, if I do. I uh, and that I hope that they can maybe come and see what we do as well. I think for lots of people, it has sparked back the, um, the energy of creativity. Um, yeah. And and it's more than just getting the counts and the views and the hours. It, it, it's getting us going and keep creating and connecting. Yeah. And yes, the sorcery, Gregory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, connecting online, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and well, that's that what we like the most. And I appreciate it. As, so much that we expand our connections beyond the channels very uh, much that's so what's so great about it yeah very much uh, so. joey says that i'm creator how to get me 400 and i'm grateful have met a lot of great people there that's right yeah that's, that's right that's that's really and it's not about really sub for sub and that can be stressed enough and two we don't want to make it the the it's not the focal point of all of it it's a it's an amazing starting point and building onto it but like people, we're always looking for people who are in it for the long haul, and I really do believe the people we have in our in our streams here are in for that. Uh, I see a lot of the same faces each time and stuff. I like seeing them interact with new ones that are here. I mean, what a great experience! Like nobody's been like uh, insulting anybody tonight if they're new or nothing. They're actually supporting them. Like Train Man was just saying, you got fifty one, and right away somebody has added added them. It's a great way to work together. And during the live stream, you can add if you don't have time to watch all the video and then go back and watch it after. There's nothing that's not sub for sub or anything. Sometimes it's just good to mark them so you know you have them and then check as well. So uh, keep up the positive vibes, guys. You know, uh, how some. do I add a video time creator? Trainman is asking you go to uh, James Cox uh, channel right now and you find a video for I'm a creator video playlist for yeah. I'm a creator. Uh, you hit the description, and in the description, you're going to see a link. When you yeah. click that link, 
uh, you get the access uh, to adding uh, videos, and that's how you add your video. Uh, a good way of doing it is to add uh, one or two videos of your own. Uh, think of the best ones you have. And then uh, you can also add uh, other people's videos as well. If there is a video that you really like, uh, you can add it to, to there as well. Um, Let's see here. Yep, you go ahead. For I'm going to uh, bring up the playlist. Yeah, Andrew is just going to show how to do it. Um, so everybody can do it who haven't right. done that yet. That's the Reddit one? Okay. Oh, this has changed a little bit. Yes, by the way, uh, if uh, any of you haven't uh, visited uh, James Cox uh, off the cuff yesterday, uh, our or James created video about I'm Creator is posted on Reddit and you can go and head on there and upvote and comment and uh, maybe get it trending. I think we can do that. That's pretty doable. Oh. One oh. video and hundreds of supporters. We can do that. There we 54 go. 54 subs, Drain Man says. There you there go. You go. Look, growing. <laughs> that's three minutes and you've jumped another three. Excellent. One per minute. That's about as good as it gets. Yeah, Camera Times says, Drain Man, go to James Fox channel, look for his first I'm Creator video. He walks you through the whole process. Yeah, you that's can do true. That. Yes. You can do that too. And here's sure. the playlist here. Oh, I got so many things open tonight. I'm starting to be like James. A thousand windows open. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and as you can see, there's all creators here. Playlist say oh, let's close that. So as you can see, and the nice thing is, like James started off by adding a lot of people, including ourselves, which I'm very thankful for. Number six, and then we try not. If you're new to it, though, just please don't put any more than two videos, and try not put like hour long uh, live streams. Try to put your videos, you know, five or ten minutes. So you get better retention that way, anyways, because if people are going through the playlist, usually they're not going to watch an hour long video. But if you put a five minute you have a lot better chance of uh, them watching it all the way through. So you get the like, the connection, plus you actually get to keep a uh, good, decent retention time. So, and then it's up at the top, right? No, I, I, my God. I'm in the description uh, usually, yeah, but I don't know, maybe he changed it yeah. lately. Uh, hmm. Now don't we have, there? Uh, oh, sorry. Add videos. Oh, yeah, okay. So there we go. Yes, because oh, because I got two buddy open. That's why. There we go. There was the button. So then you go to add video to playlist, and this is where you'll paste in your. I'm not going to add one, but we'll see here. Just do one, just as a test one. Take the train one. So I would take my link. I would go back. Oh, that's Peter. See, I got too many of these open now. Let's see, so here I go to here, paste in the link. Get your magnifying glass, and there's your video. So you click it once, and then add video. And that's it. You're in the list. And then once you're done, you start from wherever you like to. It's always good to start at the beginning and start watching videos and commenting and liking, and those people are coming over to watch you. And there are a lot of great, great, great people in here. You'd be surprised. I know you think, oh, they're not going to see me, and they're going to just want it. They really do come back. Because the more you build a connection with somebody, the, and by keep coming back, the more watch times everybody's building up, which to me is almost more crucial at some points than the subscriber count. They're both important, but 4,000 hours is a long time, and it's a lot of work to get there. So it's good to build as good a connection with people as possible. So there we go. Let's stop sharing. For sure, and and I think that the key thing is also is being active and commenting on other people's videos. Uh, the more active you stay, uh, the the more people you get back. Definitely, uh, and commenting with you as well. So it's it's definitely it's give give and take, yeah. take and give. Yeah. Uh, a relationship with uh, people on YouTube, uh, you got to stay active for sure. They, uh, I've always found for me what I worked, and it's worked decently well. I'd like to think is that when I would find a new video, I would comment and then tell them what we do and hope they can drop by. And then when I go to check my comments, I would see somebody that came back to check mine out. The very first thing I do is run over and watch another one of their videos, tell them I'm returning. Thanks for their support and uh, hope we can keep in touch. Then I go back and answer the comment that they left on my channel because I found that was a great way of starting to build a bond and getting the ball rolling to start watching each other's videos. 
And I had some people some nights that ended up watching. We did that seven times for each other in an evening. Like it was amazing. So I just find it starts everything on a good foot. It shows good faith. So, but everybody finds their own pattern. That's just mine. So. And if any of you have still questions about that creator, you can always ask any of the people who you who you see using the hashtag. Just drop by and ask in the comments or message. Like, you know, I wonder how to use a playlist or what do yep. you do this and that. And I'm sure uh, people are going to answer. So if you forget or you don't know how to do a certain thing, there's no rules of uh, not approaching anybody. Just don't ask. Uh, uh, that's completely fine. Yep. I just posted a link in the chat room of uh, the Reddit. Uh, amazing. Let's get it going, guys. Yep. Uh, well. Uh, one sec. Just, uh, just give me two seconds. I got to do this. Nova has my phone is dying. Yeah. yeah I we, see. Uh, there have been a couple of people through our live stream that have unfortunately left because their phone died. <laughs> that's a good, that's a decent that's enough a reason. reason. Yeah, yes. we can't hold you for that that's one. That's the best reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, and don't give up for sure. Very really squad, uh, you're right. Don't yeah. give up. Uh, it's, it's doable. Everybody started with zero. Yeah. Uh, no matter how big of a YouTuber uh, you look at, everybody started with zero. So just don't give up and do what you love doing. That's yeah. the main thing. It's not for money. You're doing it. You're yeah. doing it because you want to do it. And then if something comes out of it, well, it's just bonus. I have one like, last message for everybody, especially the people that's been here since the beginning and we've known for a while. And I'm a creator is a part of it, and we're definitely going to be mentioning it. I know it doesn't sound like it's our main focal point, and the reason why we did it is James is already covering it heavy. We're definitely supporting it. We definitely mention it. We just wanted to do something a bit like I always call it. It's, it's like I'm a creator 2.0, getting to know people more and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> we'll all, we always stress the benefits of it, and we really do support it. Uh, but like we want to do stuff like tech talk, uh, interviews and stuff. Now that we've built these connections, I want, we, excuse me, want to take them to the next level. That's a very, that's probably our biggest mission out of this whole thing or where we want to see the channel grow into. So, uh, I know tonight we maybe didn't mention as much, but it is definitely there. So, uh, and we'll always mention, it. I always want new people to find it cause I want them to grow as well. And uh, I hope you like the format that we're going to as well. And definitely visit and come back on our live streams. As Trayman is saying, he's up to 56 yeah, subscribers amazing. now. So uh, <laughs> visiting live streams and being in the chat and just interacting, making friends, as JJ is saying, uh, is just the right thing to do. Yep. Uh, yep. Thank you guys again for coming. Yep. Uh, uh, please again co come back, like, leave a comment, uh, a yeah. question for the next uh, Tech Tuesday uh, talk. It seems like you guys enjoyed it, so yeah. uh, we're probably going to be doing it next Tuesday as well. And again, if you want to be a guest on our live stream and feature you and your channel and get up and close and personal with us, uh, message us here or better yeah. even on Twitter if you have Twitter. Twitter, if you can, is just the fastest way because Xenia takes care of it. So that's why I'm trying to get more people into that. And I don't trust DMs here. They're they're very unreliable. So definitely Twitter. And like I say, guys, we definitely want to have a lot more guests on. So please uh, send a message to Xenia uh, through our Pusha Studios Twitter account, if possible. If not, Facebook. Uh, whatever way, if we don't get, if you don't hear back from us, let us know, and we'll work something out to get in touch with yeah, you. Yeah, and we will have all the links afterwards uh, later on when the video is going to be posted yeah. up. We'll have all the social links after. We have um, some amazing guests coming up this week uh, yep. already lined up. Uh, so please uh, don't go too far no. and uh, come <laughs> back at around 8-ish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Watch our Twitter. We're going to definitely notify you if you're having a live stream uh, because we have some very exciting guests coming up this yep, week. Yeah, definitely. Keep in touch, guys. Thank you so much for tonight. It's been an amazing blast to have you guys here. And uh, we'll see you again uh, very soon. Take care. Bye, Bye now. Take care.